I'm currently documenting my journey to go from part-time to full-time artist, illustrator slash designer. Uh, this is going to be a sort of status update, just talking about my mostly struggles, a few successes that I've had over the recent few days slash week. And uh, I think just kicking it off, something I've noticed is that it is hard to be an artist. <laughs> it's hard to draw, it's hard to paint, it's hard to create things when in doing the creation you're also thinking about all the other things that you want to create so basically every day when I sit at the graphics tablet typically to sit down and draw unless I'm doing something that's very sort of intensive taxing I'm having to kind of kind of push myself to do something that I've not really thought about before not really drawn before uh, if it's just that kind of process work which I'm doing or have been doing today for example uh, that kind of just inking or laying flat tones for a picture. Uh, my mind is just constantly thinking of all the things that in an ideal world I would or could create. And I think this is quite typical of most creative types. Anyone that does want to be an artist is going to probably know what it is to experience this kind of thing where there are ideas, you're just full of ideas. You want to implement them, you want to see them come to fruition and that was the whole point for me at least of becoming an artist to begin with I think it is for most people there's all these things that inspire and that you want to turn into something tangible and real but the frustrating and sort of disappointing thing is there just isn't the time or you don't have the energy to do it so yeah that's one little thing I've been dealing with it's just kind of feeling as though it, you know, I might be working on a single character that will take a whole day to to draw and to then ink and to add some sort of colour to, uh, and maybe I won't even finish it in a, in a day. Maybe it will take me three or four days. And uh, in that time, uh, this is part of my perhaps pessimistic uh, outlook and nature anyway. But I'll be sort of thinking, oh, why why aren't I, you know, creating this thing instead, or as well as, or oh, I wish there was time to do this other thing, and oh, if only I was quicker, if only. Uh, I was better, so uh, just dealing with that is difficult. And this is one of those things where some people might talk to me and say, "I don't think you're suited to be an artist, Ben." Like, if you are struggling to draw, if you are finding it frustrating, you're finding the whole process stressful, you're not really cut out for it. But I guess for me personally, I, I kind of feel like I would find stress and struggle in most endeavors. It's just deciding what venture I want to invest my struggles in and I think that you know if I'm creating something that seems a lot more worthy than doing a job for someone else that I can't stand in other ways uh, but that's just me so so yeah I mean I've had a, a hard time just just picking up the pencil to do anything um, I mentioned in my last video I'm still suffering from a sort of flu slash illness cold and uh <laughs> just dealing with that is difficult and one of the problems I'm finding when I when I feel ill is do I give myself a break and say you know come on have a break you've been working hard or maybe you haven't but either way I think you know you deserve a break you know you're not feeling too great don't stress yourself out too much concentrate on getting well and uh, so sort of put your feet up a little bit you know, and you kind of need that, you know, you don't want to spend your life beating yourself up, especially if you're not feeling 100% in order to produce things and to output content or, or stuff or art in my case. But then at the same time, or on the flip side, I wonder, am I just using that as an excuse? Because um, the first week of having this flu or whatever it was, I was genuinely pretty ill. The first few days I was I, struggling to get out of bed and you know, it was a struggle to sort of just cook food for myself and things like that, so. And then it sort of got better, you know, dealing with the usual things of sort of uh, snotty nose and sore throat and the rest of it. And after about a week, that wasn't really the issue. The issue now, because I've got asthma and I always get chest infections, basically whenever I get colds and flus, is it's all kind of gone to my chest and just breathing is, is an issue. Uh, it kind of feels like when I'm like every breath I take is almost like trying to breathe through a narrow straw and it's just I can't quite take in the the oxygen which sounds pretty severe to be honest I mean you hear that you think oh you maybe you should get yourself to hospital if it's that bad 
Uh, I guess I'm just used to it. And it's not stopping me from doing some things, but I certainly couldn't go for a run or do anything too vigorous. Um, I have had a few occasions over the last few days where I've tried to get out of the house and do walks. I quite like going for hikes and walks and things. And uh, I've done it. You know, I've maybe walked around for an hour or so, but just... A, you know a slight hill I'm reasonably fit but just a small hill has really kind of taken it out of me and again it's quite frustrating when you just think oh I just want to do stuff but I'm having to not because of things outside my control so yeah it, it, yeah there's there's stuff to deal with here but after a week after two weeks you know at what point do you just get on with it even if it is stressing you out or causing you to stay ill by working you know, it's, it's, I think that is a balance, you know, when you have obstacles, you need, when you have obstacles in life, whether it's illness or otherwise, I think you need to, you need to account for that, you need to not pretend like it's not an issue, I think a lot of people would just say, you know, here's, here's what, here's what you need to do to be efficient, here's what you need to do to go out and kill it and seize the day, but there's always things, I think I've mentioned before, it's, you know, you don't just wake up with, you know, 18, 19 hours in a day to just do what you want to do. Firstly, you know, you might have had a, a rough day the day before. You might have needed a bit of extra sleep and then you need to just run your life. General maintenance in running your life takes time. And then just stuff is going to happen, bad stuff, that obstacles that are going to get in the way. And so, yeah, you need to be aware of that. Um I mean, good things can happen sometimes as well, whereby it gives you like a little boost. It's like, it's like okay, I thought this was going to be longer than it I expected, but it turns out I've already finished it. Great, I've got a bit, I've got an extra hour that I didn't think I was going to have. Or, um, you know, someone says, "Oh, I'll help you out with that. I'll do that job for you." It's like, oh, good. I thought that was going to be something I was going to need to factor into my day, but now I don't have to worry about it. So it can it can work both ways, but you know. I'm, I think I'm going to focus more on the struggles. Like I say, it's one of these things where people will generally, this is because this is what people want. People want encouragement. People want to be told that they can do it, that it's going to be easy. Um, but just the way I, I am, my disposition, and also kind of wanting to be a counterpoint to that, I just think it's a bit worth being real and just saying, well, things are things are really tough sometimes. And I think even for people who are, you know, on the surface, professionals like I can show my work to people and they'll say okay yeah that's that's good enough to or it deserves work especially to sort of non-artists you know they, they're like wow you I, I, I don't know why you're not a millionaire from your talents I could never do what you do obviously if you're an artist you sort of other artists are like yeah yeah okay well I think uh you know there's always room for improvement and I'm not saying I'm the best I've, I've sort of touched on the fact that while I know that I'm not in the top sort of one percent club when it comes to standards, I'm uh, I'm fairly low down the the hierarchy, the rankings. But I probably certainly am good enough to uh, to do this as a profession. Otherwise, I would probably have stopped. I don't know. I'm quite I'm quite stubborn at the same time, so maybe I wouldn't have done. But I think I think I'm good enough to do to do this art thing. So now it's just a case of to some degree improving my craft but that's something that's going to take years which is another thing it's like I'm documenting this journey to go from part-time to full-time in order to do that in part I need to improve what I'm putting out there and I can't do that overnight it's I kind of think like art and drawing and it, especially if you're not naturally talented and I talk about this sometimes like I don't think I had that natural talent just just due to the fact that when I well when you look at a typical not a typical but <laughs> yeah not a typical at all but when you look at young artists rising artists that you know you sort of turn and think look at them and say wow that's good and, and it turns out they're only 10 years old or 15 years old and there's quite a few of them you know they're they're obviously in the one percent club most people aren't that good at that age but because the internet's a big place, there's a there's a lot of potential people that can join that club, and uh, in a way, that's kind of who you're competing against. It's pretty worrying. But I was never, I was never in that club where I was. 
you know, good at it. Like, I think there's all these endeavours where, you know, whether it's playing a sport or doing an activity, you know, maybe you're a musician or a football player or a, a rock climber or something. You, you, you know, you can be world class. You can, you know, you can play nationally for your team or whatever it is, you know, be at the top of your game. You can, you know, join a, a world renowned orchestra for your flute playing or whatever it is, if you're good enough and you, you can get away with being a teenager and be in that bracket if you're really good. Um, so the, the standards are high. Having said that, uh, people still people still persevere. People still play instruments, even though they're not part of the their 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 country's you know philharmonic orchestra set, or they're not playing for their their country's sport team. Uh, and it doesn't mean that just because you're not at that you know very top level that you have nothing positive to, to give. And I kind of feel like, like I've mentioned in a previous video about the how to draw books I did, whereby I knew my artwork wasn't the best artwork. I, I knew I wasn't really suitable to be in some ways teaching how to draw, uh, cause I was still figuring it out myself, but I knew just enough so that there were people below me who I knew would benefit from me and would benefit more from me than someone who was far, far beyond their level that they couldn't relate to, couldn't ever see themselves as, you know, becoming or uh, to a level that they could ever possibly ascend to. So, so yeah, that's what I always think. It's like, okay, I'm doing what I'm doing. I'm doing the best I can do. And it does worry me. I get really worried when I show my work to the world. Uh, and I think all artists want to do that, really, because every artist has got, an idea they want to realize and maybe they just want to see the idea for themselves you know they they want to turn a canvas into something that's not just a blank canvas and that process is enough for them or the end result and them seeing them having done a thing is enough for them to feel like yeah I did that thing that's good and I'm happy with that but I think sharing the efforts of your labor is just a like it's such an ingrained thing that the vast majority of people want want to do that's why there's so many so many videos and posts and articles and whatever about how to get more followers, how to get more likes. Uh, it's not necessarily that, I, well, not for me anyway, that I want it just to look popular or it's not a status thing. But when you've gone to the, a lot of effort to produce something that you feel has value, there's just some need to want to share it and not just share it with, you know, a few people in your local family or that live within your household but uh the sort of world at large and to so you know at the end of the day you have to know your place you have to appreciate that maybe your your work doesn't deserve like a world stage maybe you don't deserve to be uh in that that top echelon and you you know like it's all good and well trying to find out how to gain more followers on a social media account but maybe you don't deserve more followers so maybe really and this is probably true of most people maybe the real problem is the the stuff you're putting out and isn't it may not be that you don't have the ability to put out good content so i hate that word content it sounds so robotic and clinical you don't have the i don't know what another word for it is but I don't like the idea that we're just all humans consuming content because I kind of feel like it's almost like it sounds like we're sort of like a, some kind of virus in the world just consuming, consuming. We want more content, content, give us content. What we want is just quality stuff <laughs> in our lives and maybe not even great quality, but just something that that is unique or resonates with us and... Um, yeah, we want that, and we want to be part of putting that out. Um, I don't know. So yeah, it's. I think this week has been a struggle just so far as the the output goes. Sort of dealing with low energy levels, low motivation. Uh, I can't remember if I've mentioned this before, but one thing I've I struggle with as well is if I've been away 
from the drawing board for a while and it's you know that kind of habitual ritual <laughs> of uh you know going in my case case going going to my cintiq graphics tablet loading up photoshop and creating on a, a canvas if that's not there it can be quite painful to get started again uh so that's that's another thing that's that's an issue and i guess being becoming a full-time artist means to some degree that you're gonna hopefully get more of a routine and more of a habit of creating on a regular basis in in your life because i think that's that's the trouble i kind of have these bursts where i will create and create and create for a month or two or three and then there's like a lull and maybe that's a natural thing i mean i've heard other artists say that that's just what what we artists do but i don't know i mean i guess every every everyone's different i guess it depends how you work and how you deal with your you know you regulate your stress levels or your boredom levels or whatever i think i mean i if, if it is true i mean i'm not saying it is but I, like i say i heard someone uh, another artist say that you know we we have these phases that we go through i mean it might just be that we have lots of ideas and we want to just realize all those ideas buzzing around in our mind and we'll get really inspired and we'll then get to a point where we'll we would have created a lot because all that in initial inspiration would have been there and then we would have got burnt out so we'd need time off i don't know i don't, I don't really know exactly how it works how how i work and how artists in general work but figuring out uh like a, a daily ritual would probably be a good idea because most of the well yeah pretty much most of the, the the top echelon of people i see that are doing full-time artistry they are people who pretty much you know four five days a week are just drawing something creating some products you know well maybe not drawing painting i'm just talking from my own perspective being a sort of manga comic book tattoo style inspired illustrator artist so uh yeah, because I'm still I'm still really aware of that. I'm still really aware of the fact that I'm producing content, which is it's, it's it's mostly general and could apply to lots of things. Like I'll use an analogy, like you know, sports teams and musicians, but perhaps I shouldn't do that because I'm e I mean I'm even worried about I'm worried that if I say oh yeah you I, you know I'm I'm doing my drawing and then I need to do my inking, then my colouring, you know, that's that draw ink colour, that's just that's just what comic book artists do and a, you know, the occasional uh I don't know, illustrator and the occasional concept artist. It's not really a process which probably applies to most artists, but I don't know, maybe I'm overthinking it. I I, I mean I kinda of draw what I draw if any, if anyone has checked out any of my videos in the past, they'll just say, oh, okay. This guy does manga illustrations and that's his thing. So of course he's going to talk about drawing rather than sculpting or something. Yeah, so so yeah, there are struggles, there are difficulties and I think uh, it can be quite difficult to to deal with those. And, and I just wanted to like air those out because I think it's it's useful to know that not everything is fun and games and easy <laughs> it's not necessarily really hard and you know like there are worse jobs in the world than trying to you know create something out of nothing on a digital canvas or something uh it, it comes with its own set of challenges i guess and uh why not talk about those so so yeah i mean i've i've done some things so one just sort of giving a bit of a status update i said that i would be working on a card game because even though the, the main goal is to figure out well how do i how do i go from sort of part-time uh you know creating doing the occasional commission or or doing a show and selling a few art prints for example through just uh, a few online channels or events and how do i you know, how, how do I even do? How do I either do more of that, or how do I just expand what I do generally? Uh, 
I still I, I still don't really know the answer <laughs> because at the back of my mind I'm always thinking oh you know there's it's complicated I mean even if we just take something quite current like AI how do I compete against that and I feel like I need a bit of a strategy above and beyond just creating a good picture and this is why I, this is another thing it's like okay well even artists that are at a higher level than me they are probably they, they can't compete with AI really because I mean and that well an AI prompter could create a portfolio of 10 amazing rendered images in the space of like two or three hours that would have minimal sort of artifacts defects and things and if you were if you were sort of half decent you could probably edit a lot of that out you know if you do find that you've generated an AI character that's got some weird you know six finger hanging off the side of their foot or something you could you could photoshop that out it's not it's not a hard job you don't need to know the rules of anatomy and perspective and the rest of it in order to understand just how to photoshop weird shit out of ai basically so so yeah it doesn't it's all we're almost at a point now where yeah for every one image that anyone any real high-end artist could produce you could potentially have 10 AI images that are on a par with it. And everyone would argue, oh yeah, well, it's AI, it's rubbish, it's crap. And it's like, no, it's not. There's limitations to it. There's still things which it can't quite do. But it's getting better all the time. I mean, I've been playing quite, I've been paying quite close attention to it now for about two years. And uh, certainly it's, it's, you just, I can just see the progress sort of month on month, but anyway, so that, 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 just that on its own is, is reason to certainly question the whole endeavour to begin with. Uh, I don't feel we're at a point, point yet where there is no job for it. It's not like I am a professional, like, uh, typewriter repair, repairman and, there's now no longer any typewriters for me to repair. You know, it's not like my compl my whole profession has been wiped out, but we're getting there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so yeah, that is something that, oh, well, that, I mean, that's something that would require a whole video and a talk and a discussion about just on its own. I mean, there's a million artists and things that have already discussed this but I've got a few. I've got a few points that because I've heard of. I've heard three or four experts talk about. You know, expert artists talk about the AI thing, and uh, I do fundamentally disagree with a few of their opinions. I think they're quite naive. They don't really understand what's going on. They think they do, and to some degree, what they're saying is true, but only true to a certain subsection of artists, or only true to them in their particular careers. But anyway, um, yeah, still want to do stuff, still want to figure out exactly the best way to move forward so far as the sort of more, uh, I guess, just for argument's sake, the more commercial stuff goes or the, the, the real kind of way forward, the, the big project that I'm going to be working on next. But the minute I'm just working on a, until I kind of get there, and while I have a few weeks of spare time, I'm working on this uh, card game that I've been thinking about for a while so yeah it's called total blast so this is going to be the back of the cards so it's a two-player head-to-head card game where you basically have cannons that are uh, firing ag against your enemy and they're firing cannons against you and you're trying to sort of fill the cannons up with corresponding sort of magical colored uh, cannonballs that can fire into your enemy territory and along the way you're picking up certain abilities items upgrades that can allow you to do this better and score more points than your opponent so it's one of these things so I've been a I've been a, a like a I've been a fan of just general board games and card games since I was a kid but I think certainly in the last four 
or five years, I want to say, maybe six years even, I kind of got more into modern board gaming. Uh, I mean, even before then, I, I, you know, I was playing, uh, you know, Settlers of Catan and uh, Pandemic, but I've gone from those gateway games more recently, I guess you could say, into, uh, uh, what would you say? I don't know what the most popular ones are these days, but probably stuff like, um, I want to say Gloomhaven, like I've played it, but it's not, I wouldn't say it's my favourite game, but that kind of thing. So these sort of, even, not necessarily even these big epic dungeon crawl D&D-esque board games, but just stuff that's just kind of fun to play and uh, a little bit different. It's funny when you're trying to remember your favourite games and then off the top of the head, your head you can't remember. But anyway, so I've been a, a fan of this kind of stuff for a while and um, I'm trying to think... Well, I, I kind of thought it would be a good idea or it'd be fun to put my own card game together. So initially it was just going to be for fun and then I kind of thought, oh, actually this could be turned into a thing. Uh and then I just got inspired and started creating artwork for it. So I started creating some of the other card arts. And I'm just going to show some of these here. So as part of it, it was going to have characters. Because I thought, I've done characters before. Characters are fun to do. So I wanted to create characters that I could, um, that I could use in this card game. And I was trying to think of a style. Initially, I went for something a bit chibi cutesy and then I kind of wanted to make it a bit slightly more adult and I don't know why I did this like I was quite happy with having this idea that you'd have these little characters in this case this little knight that would give you some kind of ability and then I started thinking no 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 each you could have character cards that could give you an ability that make your game a bit easier or give you a power or something <coughs> and I wanted to I wanted to just do something that was just fun. I did. I it didn't really care. I wanted. I wanted it to be kind of more of that medieval fantasy thing. But I also thought, oh, wouldn't it be cool to have like robots and aliens and monsters and all that kind of stuff? And I've, I got a bit carried away. But then I just thought, oh, yeah, who cares? This is. This is my. This is my stupid little game. I'm gonna do it. Uh, so I thought, okay, we'll have a. We'll have a a range of sort of six or seven characters. We'll have like um. We have like a, a thief, a, a ninja, a spy, a mage, merchant, uh, a king. But we'll also have an alien. And uh, I want to have a robot as well. So so what I had done prior to recently is create um, some characters that would be used on cards. So this would be an example of one of them. And this would be kind of roughly what it would look like on a card. So... It would talk about the benefits and stuff. So, anyway, the idea this week is to start working towards that. Uh, but it's not that simple. So, firstly, I'm sort of gathering up reference material. Then I'm doing like rough sketches, then neater sketches. Then I'm inking it and laying some flat tones. And I'm still yet to get to the point where I'm going to add to the color and the rendering. But this was the style that I started doing, and I'm now trying to match that for future characters. Like I say, I wanted aliens. This was an example of the alien. And this was the spy that I had created for the game. And this week I had an idea to do the mage. So this was the line art. And then today I just finished um, adding the, the tones and inking it a bit neater. And... Uh, yeah, the other day I was working on this uh, merchant as well. So I've done this guy and I'm going to be inking him and adding the colours. Uh, funnily enough, it just takes it uh, takes hours. It's just going to take like three or four hours just to like get go from this initial like line stage to the uh, flat tone stage. And then another four or five, six hours to then colour it. And then after that, I've got an idea to do a... Uh, like I say, I'm going to do a king and also some kind of robotic thing with a slight sort of steampunk edge. So, so yeah, that's what I'm working on. It's it's one of those 
things where it's kind of like everything I do. I don't, I don't have a, a fixed brief or it maybe it would be good if I had a client that was telling me exactly what they wanted and why they wanted it. And, you know, coming, coming at me with a very concise idea, not, not necessarily that just from having a client, it means that clients have good concise ideas, but I'm kind of doing a little, little bit of figuring it out as I go type of thing. So I'm like, oh, okay, what sort of style should I go with? What sort of character should I have? What sort of things should I be thinking about when I'm putting this whole thing together? But it's fun, it's enjoyable. And like I say, while I have a few weeks, it'd be good to work towards completing some of these characters so that at least the character side of the cards are, are done. Because I've already done some of the item cards. For example, we've got like the gunpowder card. So I've done a lot of the items, but they're fairly it's fairly straightforward to put something like this together. Fairly. Uh, but I, I think characters are a lot more... Well, no, no one cares if you draw a plank of wood and it's a bit wonky. But people will care if the characters just look a bit bland and boring and you know there's a problem with them so again doing the best i can just to create create this uh, little pro product project and then i'm going to think about how to to refine it because li there's little things like the logo i was just dabbling with like logos things and i think I, i'm going to want to change this this was like an initial you know i think it need, i think it needs some work but that's where I'm at at the minute. It's it's a project I'm working on. It's 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 fun. It's got a lot going on with it, and it's something which is going to take weeks of just chipping away at. So I'm kind of doing that in the meantime as uh, as I continue the rest of my artistic journey. But I think it's it's good. It's a good excuse to sort of get back into just creating stuff because I'd had a bit of a break and I wanted just to. Uh, yeah, kind of re-familiarise myself with this process of creating pictures. It's funny because I've, I've drawn hundreds and hundreds of pictures at this point. And every time I draw, it's I'm still not really... I wouldn't necessarily say most of the time I enjoy the process. The, I mean, I enjoy the process at the end when I see it all come together. But until that point, I'm always concerned that what I'm doing is not good enough. And, you know, it's never... I mean, I mean, I think what I'm doing at the early stages is is horrendous, and I think no, what like this isn't working. Uh, you know, a lot of self doubt will set in. I'll start to think this isn't working. This isn't looking good. How is this ever supposed to be considered like a professional product that's getting put out into the world? And then normally t towards the end of the process, it will start to uh, start to come together, and I'll be like, oh, okay, this isn't too bad. I'm quite happy with what I'm doing here. Uh, so. I guess, I guess as well, when you've been working on something and it's just you working on that thing in isolation, uh, as long as you're comparing it with things that you've done in the past, you can look at it and be pretty proud of yourself. You can think, yeah, this is good. I've actually actually made some good stuff here. I think the only problems really are when you're sort of chopping and changing between looking at what you're creating and maybe looking at other artists' work which are beyond the level that you could potentially ever create i think as long as you're comparing what you're doing perhaps to what you had produced previously in the past yesterday last week last year and you kind of feel that you know it's it's of the same standard if not a little bit better that's great i think as soon as or i've noticed for me as soon as i look at other people's work and i start to think oh this whole endeavor i should give it up right now but as I showed in a previous uh, video, some of my early work, I think it was in the second video or first video I ever did uh, when I was talking about the, the journey to becoming an artist, like my work was not good. <laughs> I thought it was good, but it was not good. And like I said, I'd probably end up thinking that what I'm currently doing is not good. But what is true is the fact that I have made progress. I'm sure... If I did a, a, another video where I was talking about, okay, this is this is, this is some artwork I did, even professionally, even like the first few commissions I did compared to like later projects, I think it'd be quite difficult to say, 
no, your first work was better and you've made no progress. I've definitely made progress. So, so that is a good thing. But, um, but yeah, this is just me giving a status update, telling it how it is. And like at this stage, I'm not too worried about, uh, this being the, the prettiest, bestest video of all time. This is me just talking about what I'm doing right now. It's funny. I've had people before say, I don't think you should be doing videos, Ben. Like, I, I, you're, you're, you're very negative and you're talking about all these things that are maybe not going wrong or you're talking about your worries about creating artwork. And I don't think you should say that. I don't think you should mention when it's not working. And this is going back to this idea that when you're a professional, you're supposed to project this confident, uh, kind of iron nailing it attitudes like yeah I can do anything I can hit the target 100% of the time I never fail and uh, I guess in the context of producing work for clients you know clients look at my work and they say oh I like what you've done so far can you produce a thing like that for me and then I go away and then I do it and I do hit the mark and I hit the mark pretty much every time uh, I've never had any I've never had anyone specifically say, I don't like what you've done there. I mean, I've had a few half-finished projects where the idea was to potentially create a full finished picture and then we only got halfway and then the client just sort of ghosted me. Um, but it was never a case of... I mean, maybe, so maybe they were, you know... And I'm saying this is this is less than 1% of projects I've, I've worked on. So maybe they those particular people weren't happy... Which is weird because I always say, you know, if you're not happy with something, you just got to communicate, just tell me and then I can go away and change it. It's not like just because I've drawn something or done things a certain way, that's it. You know, and obviously, obviously if people are employ employing me or anyone to work for them, they would have checked out their portfolio in advance, kind of been clear or understood about the sort of artwork or the standard that that artist is going to be able to produce for them. So as long as the standard is at least maintained, it always seems a bit weird when a, a client will just go quiet. Uh, like I said, it doesn't, it doesn't really it hasn't really happened very often, but it has a couple of times. But um, but yeah, I mean, I just I just I'm really at a stage now where I don't I don't I don't care about looking looking like a professional. I'd rather just say I'm trying to do this art thing and it's really hard. And I'm struggling and, you know, I could just say I'm struggling with all aspects of life. You know, I, I wake up in the middle of the night crying into my pillow. I, I don't, but I, I, I wouldn't mind just saying that if that's what was going on for me. Because um, that's all you can do. I think there's a, there's a million people out there that will just say, look at me. Here's a thing. I'm nailing it. I'm brilliant. Or maybe they wouldn't be so... Uh, bold as to say that maybe they would just show it off and I've done that in the past I've kind of just put stuff out there and just said yep this is some work I've done and I've been like yep it's pretty good mm, yeah good yeah yeah I know I'm pretty good yeah yeah it's good but that's not what this is this is this is me just just saying what's on my on my mind and if I'm honest what's on my mind isn't all polished professional well thought out it's a chaotic mess of chaos and negativity and despite that like i've shown i still managed to somehow <laughs> produce something and uh that's what i'm going to continue to do so anyway that's just a little update for today and uh i will be updating with another video soon <laughs>